Please stand. I am resurrection, and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though he die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my awaking, he will raise me up, and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, and my eyes behold him, who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself, and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord, and if we die, we die in the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light, Grant that your servant, Harvey, being raised with him, may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all of my possessions, And if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Please stand. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. 
They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? If then you are not able to do so small a thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not keep striving for what you are to eat and what you are to drink, and do not keep worrying, for it is the nations of the world that strive after all these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, strive for his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So one of my earliest memories of St. John's when I arrived here last year was on the very first Sunday morning. Right after that first Eucharist service had ended, and I was standing outside those red doors in the back, shaking hands and meeting all these new people. There's one person who stands out in my memory from that morning. I remember this brief meeting so well, not just because this man had the coolest head of white hair I'd ever seen in my life, but because as he shook my hand, he said, I'm Harvey Pride, and let me know if there's ever anything I can do for you. There was something about how he said that and how he looked at me that I knew he was serious. It turns out Harvey meant every word that he said. Throughout the short time I was lucky enough to know Harvey, he remained true to that word. He would even check in with me on a regular basis just to see how I was doing. Harvey was a man deeply devoted to God and to this church. If an acolyte or a lay Eucharistic minister forgot to show up on a Sunday morning, I never had any reason to worry because Harvey already had his vestments on, ready to step in. In fact, he was already committed to serve at the first service we were going to have when we all get back together after the pandemic ends. Harvey deeply believed in the power of prayer. And you can usually count on at least one person on our Sunday morning prayer list being there because Harvey put them on there. And what's more, he ensured that I knew who they were, why we're praying for them, and most importantly, he gave thanks to God when those prayers were answered. Many times when we're in the process of planning for a funeral, it can take days for the family to decide which readings they want to have at that service. Because we want these readings to reflect our loved one in a special way that fits them. I think y'all had the readings in, what, 30 seconds? <laughs> well, we heard this afternoon in both 1 Corinthians and in Luke's Gospel are reminders that all we have and all that we give to others is rooted in the love that God first gives to us. Of course, the word love gets thrown around all the time these days, but the love of God, the love we as followers of Christ are to emulate and to share, is so much more than the warm feeling or a Hallmark card. This love asks us to be patient, kind, humble, and truthful. And above all, this love asks us to put our trust, faith, and hope in God. 
And it's when we begin to direct that focus outwards towards others instead of towards ourselves that we will be one step closer to living the kind of life that will bring about God's kingdom on earth that much sooner. These readings y'all chose fit Harvey to a T. Harvey devoted much of his life serving others. And through his many, many years in Rotary and the other service organizations he was a part of, he directed the love that God had for him outward to others. We may never truly know the number of people who were brought just a little bit closer to knowing that God loves them too because of Harvey's work and his efforts. But perhaps the greatest measure one has of the love they shared in their lifetime can be seen in their family. And I see a family that is strong, a family that will continue to care for each other, family that will continue to love each other. After all, it is love that bears all things. It's love that believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, not even in death. That's the hope we have as Christians. And that's the hope that Harvey now lives in. He is at rest and surrounded by the peace and love of God. I suppose it's particularly appropriate during this season of Advent, while we wait in that joyful expectation for the coming of Christ, that we realize we're also joyfully waiting for that time when we'll be joined together again with Harvey and all the communion of saints who have gone before us. That's the true meaning and power of hope in the resurrection that guides and shapes our lives as followers of Christ. In just a few minutes, when we join our voices with those angels and archangels and all that company of heaven to praise God, we know there will always be at least one faithful acolyte serving around the altar of God with dazzlingly white hair. And his name is Harvey Pride. Amen. Please stand. In the assurance of eternal life given us at baptism, let us proclaim our faith and say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our brother Harvey, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Harvey and to dry the tears of those who weep. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. You raised the dead to life. Give to our brother eternal life. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. 
bring our brother to the joys of heaven. Our brother was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your saints. He was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our brother. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our brother Harvey, who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that his death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please be seated. It is an honor to be able to be here as part of the service for Harvey. Um, I had a short time knowing him, and I envy y'all for the time that you had to spend with Harvey. And I'm so thankful to be a part of this service in his memory. And thankful for all those who are also watching on the live stream. Um, who knows how many people will be part of this service. Harvey's an amazing person, and his memory will last for a very, very, very long time. For communion, I will come here. Um, instead of going to the altar rail, I'll bring communion here, and then you're welcome to come up and receive the bread and go back to your pew. And then at the end of the service, um, when we process out, I'll ask the family to follow me out as we go into the garden for the committal. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering, a sacrifice to God. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere 
to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. For to your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place, eternal in the heavens. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy and peace and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom all this we ask through your son jesus christ by him and with him and in him in the unity of the holy spirit all honor and glory is yours almighty father now and forever amen And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. 
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love, you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort in affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Harvey. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.